The Nick and Matt Show. I did not anticipate that I would be the person running the tour or creating the tour. Um, in in 2003 or four or five, uh, I joined the PDGA board of directors and you can ask everybody on the board, but I was the entire time I was there, I was just pro focused. Mm -hmm. Um, the grassroots of the sport is growing. It will continue to grow. There's lots of people pushing the grassroots, all the local leagues and things like that. We didn't have at the time, we didn't have a top down approach to growth. You learn disc golf in school for three weeks and then you're done. And they're like, I'm talking about middle school and high yeah. school. Like you, it's a, it's a part of your gym class, yeah. but it's not cool because there's no professional tour. So then you don't go play it anymore. Even if you know, there's a course down the street, you're just like, okay, now I know what those baskets are, but I don't know about somebody named Paul Macbeth or yeah. someone named Ricky or someone sure. named Simon or someone named Paige or someone named Sarah Hocum. We could go with that list. Yeah, you can go on and on at this point. Here. Interesting. Right. Top, and, top down approach. Yeah. And I, I think that that's part of the reason we're seeing tremendous growth in the sport right now. People like Jomez putting out video, people like the pro tour, making it cool to be a pro touring professional. Mm -hmm. There's that, that kind of like, that's the hook. If you will, people understand the game and they think it's fun, but give me a hook. Give me a reason to go do it again. And that was always my goal. I I'm very comfortable that people can do grassroots growth and that'll happen. But the top down was, it didn't seem like anybody was focusing on that. So in 2005 or six or whatever it was, I joined the board and I wanted the NT to, to become something special. I wanted MPO and FPO only. I wanted a, a geographic circuit that made sense. I wanted higher payouts and I wanted media coverage. And I consistently got it voted down. Um, 2010, uh, Jay Redding and I chaired the national tour committee. We did the exact same thing and tried again. And uh, we all of the tournament directors agreed and all the NT committee people agreed and we put it to the board and it got voted down again. Mm -hmm. um, 2013, I tried one more time. And then in 2014, I proposed the idea of the Pro Tour. And then in 2015, I did it again and we went ahead and moved forward. Yeah. So you stuck with it all those years. And it's pretty crazy, you know, listening to that because, you know, 2010, 11, 12, 13 is kind of when that's when I got into the sport was about 2012, 2013. And there was already that big showing of pros. Like I would come out to the Vibram Open and be able to see all the favorite players who I do get to watch on YouTube. But a lot of the players were putting out their own content. Like one of the things that I liked was back in the day, the McBeast Diaries. Paul and his brother, Jonathan, were going out and filming Paul's tournaments. And he was doing, you know, say B tiers, A tiers, um, NTs, majors, and he was filming all of them. And so everyone was watching those. And that's how I got to know who Paul was as a competitor. And so I like the fact that you were top down the whole time because that kick started all these players nowadays actually being able to make a living right. in the sport, which, yeah. you know, shout out to you. And hopefully all these pros do appreciate that because it's incredible to hear. And in just a minute here, we're actually, well, we're going to talk about how to make it so more than just the top 20 can make it on the road. And I don't know what your model was, but like, there's a certain, there's a certain cutoff where if you're not making it, you're not probably making it. Um, so right. did you have something you wanted to follow up on that? Yeah, I just wanted to say the, the, the goal of the pro tour from the very start, uh, has, has been twofold. Number one, and, and they, they feed off of each other. Number one, bring spectators to make, make disc golf a, a spectator sport. And, and number two, make it so that touring pros can actually make a living. Yeah. Uh, you can literally be a touring pro. You're not necessarily getting all your money from from purses, but if you can make your name on the pro tour and then you put your name on a disc and then sell that disc and do some clinics, then you've got three income streams mm -hmm. and you actually can make a living staying on tour. Yeah. Um, one of one of the best days of my life in the last five or six years, um, and I have no idea if this is actually true, but I one of the days that I remember being significantly positive, I'll word it that way was when Sarah Holcomb uh, came up to me. I don't know if she gave me a hug or not, but she said, Steve, last year I went out on tour all year. I worked my butt off and I finished the year with $2,000 less than I started. 
And this year, I'm already up for the season, and we're halfway through, and things are looking great. And thank you very much because this is this is how it how it gets going. Yeah. As soon as somebody can make money doing something, somebody else will do it. Mm-hmm. Um, Paul, Paul Macbeth is the best in the world right now, but there's a bunch of 17 year olds going, "Hey, <laughs> why can't I be? That I can next throw somebody. a thousand feet." Yeah. Yeah. And and they're gonna go on tour, and they're willing to live in their van for a season or two, yeah. and see where it goes. Right. And I anyway, just, that, that's all you had the right perspective. You're the original founder. I'll always remember you as being that. And so it's got to be different. Uh, do you have any feelings about the disc golf pro tour starting off tomorrow? Is that really exciting or what would you say about that? I'm giddy. Okay. Um, I've kept, I've kept my disc golf network subscription for the last four or five months. Nice. And, uh, it, it might have only been two or three months. I, I, who knows? Yeah, March. But uh, Mo, three, Mo and crew have done an amazing job creating content and create keeping us mildly engaged. Mm-hmm. Um, and Jeff and Seth and I, I can't imagine the scramble that happened behind the scenes. Uh, I can't imagine it, actually. But um, <laughs> the great thing is we didn't see any of the scramble. On this side, when when I ran the pro tour, everybody saw all the scramble, um, and that that was that's just one of my. Th- I'm just I'm as transparent as can be, but uh, Jeff and Seth have put together an amazing. They've saved the season. They got the DDO coming open coming up. They've got the what is the what's the, the next one called the preserve. The, um, preserve yep. Yeah, um, the preserve coming up, and then that that takes care of SFO and and Portland. Plus, next year, what do you do with these two events? Maybe we're going to go up to 12 or 13 events. And <laughs> yeah. we got some great Super Series events. I'm very, very excited for the future of the Pro Tour. And uh, I'm in a really good place because I get – my goal all along was – and I, this is – it's hilarious that I – to say this with, with what we went through and have this actually be my goal. My goal all along was literally to sit on a beach with my tablet – and watch live disc golf. That's like, not not this year, not next year, but some year down the road. And I just want to sit there and watch live disc golf, sitting on a beach, just sipping my beer going, this is pretty freaking cool. Yeah. Um, and we did it. Yeah, I think that, that's got to be a tremendous feeling. Excellent job. Congratulations on that. And you, it's like, you're not in the retirement. 